Suppose these numbers 1, 2 and 3 represents the first place, second place and third place. And then we have some sequences of these numbers 1, 2, 3. For example, this sequence. This sequence is is such a sequence in which 2 is at the first place, 1 is at the second place and 3 is at the third place. So you see that uh, this 3 is at the third place. This is when we will call, uh, we will say that a number is at its right place. So 3 is at its right place. So, but we are looking for some kind of uh, sequences in which none of the numbers are at their right place. For example, this one, you see 2 is at the first place, 3 is at the second place and 1 is at the third place. And we will ask this question, how many such sequences are possible? So 1, 2 and 3 can be arranged in 3 factorial ways. 3 factorial is basically 3 into 2 which is 6 ways. What? You can have 6 sequences. Out of them, how many how many of them are derangements in which none of the numbers are at their right places? So one way to think about is like if you think of a perfect arrangement that all the numbers are at their right place, there is only one such arrangement, one, two, three. So somebody might think that there will be only one derangement, but I can prove you with this simple example that even here there are more derangements. For example, this one, is this a derangement? Oh no, because 1 is at the right place. No, how about the next one? Well, 3 is at the first place, 1 is at the second place, and 2 is at the third place. This is again a derangement. So we had this derangement before, and now we also have this derangement. So there can be more than one derangement. And how to count such derangements? Th that we will discuss in this video. By the way, with 1, 2, 3, how many more derangements are there? We have already figured out these two derangements. Are there more? So we can simply write down the remaining uh, uh, sequences. For example, if I have 1 at the first place, I can have 3, 2 or 2, 3. And I have exhausted the possibility of 2 at the first place. I can have 3 at the first place and I have uh, 1, 2 and 3, 2, 1. Are these derangements? No, they are not derangements because in both of these sequences, 2 is at the right place. And one of them, 1, 2, 3, is a perfect arrangement. Okay, so we have only two derangements here, this one and this one. Well, how about, uh, how about 4? How about when we have 1, 2, 3 and 4? These are the numbers denoting the positions, first, second, third positions. And let's think about this. Is this a derangement? Um, 4 is not at its right place, 1 is not, okay, 3, so this is not a derangement. How about the next one? Is this a derangement? Yep, 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 yes, so this is a derangement. This is a derangement, but how many more such derangements? How many uh, sequences do we have here? 4 factorial, so 4 into 3 into 2, that is going to be 24, and uh, we can't go on checking these 24 sequences whether they are derangements or not. That will take a long time. So let's think about uh, an algorithm which we can use here to figure out the number of derangements. So the algorithm is like you, you, you make a logical formulation of this problem first and then you can, you can play around with some logical rules. So let's say P1 is a possibility in which 1 is at its right place. For example, these sequences 1, 2, 3, 4 of course, maybe 1, 3, 2, 4, maybe 1, 4, 2, 3, these sequences in which 1 is at the right place. I don't care about 2 or 3 or 4 if they are at their right place or not. Okay, only 1 I know is at its right place. So all the sequences in which 1 is at its right place. Okay. Similarly, P2 is a possibility in which 2 is at its right place. So 2 is at its right place, 1, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4 also. It could be 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, things like that. And you can feel that uh, the number of elements in P1 and number of elements in P2 will be same. But um, let's first formulate our problem. So 3 is at its right place, 4 is at its right place. These are P3 and P4. 
and then we can write what is happening here the the possibility in which neither p1 nor p2 nor p3 or nor p4 is happening okay so p1 bar it represents not intersection means and so not p1 and not p2 and not p3 and not p4 and this will guarantee that none of the number is at its right place okay so you you will have to apply d morgan's principle here that uh, the negation of the union is the intersections of the negations so this d morgan principle if we apply and then we can maybe think it like so you have this uh, negation at uh, now at all the this complete union here and then you can write it as the universal set minus this thing this is what negation means so we are applying first d morgan's principle and then we are thinking is it easier to count this part because this thing to count at once was creating a, a lot of problem it was very difficult so maybe we can uh, formulate it like this and count the second part um, let's see what happens now first let me give you explain you what I have done here with the help of these uh, this Venn diagram so p1 is uh, a possibility in which one is at its right place irrespective of other numbers p2 is that set p3 is that set and p4 is that set so you see this is the intersection of all these sets which means that p1 p2 p3 and p4 all are happening together so 1 2 3 4 there's only one element the perfect arrangement resides here so how about uh, the uh, the intersection of p1 p2 and p3 if you're talking about that so 1 2 and 3 are at its right place only i am not thinking about p4 but when 1 2 3 are at its right place the 4 will always be at its right place also so this area which is here you can see this area here this area lies in p1 and it also lies in p2 right and it also lies in p3 as you can see this one so this area right here it does not lie in p4 you can think uh, you can see that this uh, orange kind of uh, the ellipse it lies outside that so this area is vacant because uh, we don't have any number in which only p1 p2 and p3 is happening okay so similarly this and this area and these areas are also empty because uh, you can't have a p1 p3 p4 and situations like that so then we will think about p1 p2 p1 and p2 one and two are at at its right place in that case you will have one two three four and you will also have one two four three so where is p1 p2 this area p1 intersection p2 p1 and p2 so we have this area right here which is in p1 and p2 okay, only in p1 and p2 so we have one two three four here the other possibility one two four three should be there similarly you can fill up other numbers but you know that it will take a long time and then you can figure out uh, this union of all these possibilities and then you can subtract like how many have i got here now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and i have 24 possibilities and i can subtract 15 from there and i'll get nine numbers which are derangements so this is what I am talking about. This is the plan. But you see, the, the main problem is now to count how many numbers are there in the union. But we have a very interesting uh, uh, rule, which is called inclusion-exclusion principle, which we can use to count the number of elements in union. So what is that? Before I go into that, let me formulate, generalize it for n numbers. I have these n places. And I have to count these derangements. How do I do that? I define these uh, possibilities p1, p2, and pn. Okay. And then I think about this is my derangement, this is my event when the derangement happens, when either p1 is happening, nor p2, nor p3, nor pn. 
So this I can apply De Morgan's principle and then I can write it down as U minus this. And I know that the number of elements in the universal set is n factorial and I have to calculate this thing for which I am going to use now inclusion exclusion principle. One of my favorites, I have a, a proof of this principle on my channel. I would post a link in the description, you can see the proof and you can, because in this video I am not going to prove this principle. I will just use this principle. I will explain it a little bit. What is principle of inclusion exclusion? So you see n a1 union a2, you can count it like this. This is a very simple um, situation in which you have two sets. Suppose you have some set x1 elements here, x2 elements there and x3 elements here. So when you are trying to count the union, you are trying to count x1 plus x2 plus x3. And for that, you can take an a1. When you say a1, you have x1 plus x2 both here. When you say an a2, you have x2 and x3 both here. And when you say the intersection, you have to subtract this x2 once. So you see one, one time x2 will be cancelled out and you will get x1 plus x2 plus x3. So this works for two sets. For three sets, it's even more interesting. And uh, in this, you have to add these uh, number of sets. A number of elements in these sets individually first and then take uh, the intersection two at a time and subtract them and then add the intersection taken three at a time. So this formula becomes like this a1 a2 a3 and you have this term and this term and this term and very surprisingly this goes on forever you can use it for four sets then you will have to sum uh, and a1 and a2 and a3 and a4 and, and then intersection 2 at a time, subtract, then intersection 3 at a time, sum, then eventually intersection 4 at a time, there will be only one such term there, so you subtract that. So in general, this formula looks like this. Well, and now you will say that we are, this is getting very complicated, but this will help us, this will help us because we are breaking down a, a big event into some smaller events and these can be counted out very easily let's go into it so we have these numbers uh, we have these positions and we have these numbers we have to count these derangements and uh, the this is the event which we are talking about we can apply de morgan's principle and we can reduce it to this and then we will we know that this is n factorial and then we will use inclusion exclusion principle so let's dive into this part. So I have to count the union of possibilities of uh, these possibilities p1 to pn. So first thing I have to sum, I have to figure out this thing. What is this thing? So sum of np1 plus np2 and np3 and so on till npn. What is pn, p1? That a sequence, a possibility in which one is at its right place. So you have these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 till n and if one is at its right place, it's fixed here, the other numbers can permute in n minus 1 factorial ways and this is why np1 is n minus 1 factorial. How about np2? 2 is glued to its right place and the other numbers, these n minus 1 numbers, then again can permute in n minus 1 factorial ways. So np2 is also n minus 1 factorial and so on. npn is also n minus 1 factorial. So if we sum all these numbers, we get n times n minus 1 factorial, which is basically n factorial. Very interesting. <laughs> you get all possible sequences here. Okay. And then the second the second part i have to take these intersections okay and then suppose i think about p1 p2 so one is also at its right place and two is also at its right place so the remaining n minus two numbers are permuting in all possible ways in n minus two factorial okay so this here you have to think of how many such intersections will you need you can have p1 intersection p2 you can't have p2 intersection p1 because it's basically the same thing. You can maybe have p1 intersection p3. You can maybe have p6 intersection p7. So how many such intersections will you have? One, we have one, we have two, we have three, and we have numbers still n. 
I can choose any of these two in nc2 ways and then I can have so many cases here, right? So we will have nc2 such cases and then we will sum all those cases. All of them will have a value n-2 factorial. So you will get nc2 multiplied by n-2 factorial and this will give you n factorial by 2 factorial because nc2 is n factorial by n minus 2 factorial 2 factorial and then n minus 2 factorial this cancels out and you get this very simple looking term here in the third in the third part here which is going to get added we will have nc3 n minus 3 factorial and this will be n factorial by 3 factorial and so on so almost done now so we have to count this thing and we know that this is n factorial and then this thing we are counting as n factorial in the beginning then n factorial by 2 factorial and this thing you simplify it a little bit and you get this expression you would say why are you not cancelling this thing out uh, you will see <laughs> just for uh, notational purposes it's, it looks better like this I want to start from 1 I don't want to start from 2 why you will see later so this is the number of derangements let's see if it works or not so if we put n is equal to 2 here what do we get 2 factorial and we end here at the 2 factorial so how much is this 2 factorial 1 minus 1 you can cancel this out for calculation sake and you get only 1 so what does this mean if you have only 1 and 2 so you can have these two sequences out of which this is a derangement so the answer is correct the formula is working how about for 3? We calculated for 3, we had 2 derangements, right? In the beginning of the video. Let's see now. So this will cancel out. This will be 3 factorial time by 2 factorial will be 3 and then minus 1 and it works. 2. How about n is equal to 4, sorry. n is equal to 4. And uh, we figured out in the beginning of the video, it has to be 9. Let's see, this gets cancelled out. 4 factorial by 2 factorial remains 3 into 4, 12, minus 4 plus 1 and it's working. So, just by breaking up a, a complicated task into similar logical tasks, we have figured out a formula for derangements. <clears throat> Let's think if n is a very large number. So, what this formula is just like this. This thing right here, if you remember e to the power x, it has an expansion like 1 plus 1 by x by 1 factorial plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial and so on. So if you put minus 1 here, you will get 1 plus 1 by 1 factorial minus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial and so on. So this thing here for very large numbers, this will be very, very close to 1 by e. I know this is not infinite. This is a finite series. But uh, look at uh, the later numbers. They are very, very small. Even if they are getting added or subtracted, when n gets big, that their effect will decay down. So this, is, this will be very close to 1 by e. So in um, for large numbers, you will have approximately, uh, if you use the approximate value 2.718, and then you will figure out that almost 36.79% of the all arrangements of all possible sequences are derangements. Okay, so what did we learn? <laughs> that there are more than one derangement. <laughs> Thank you.